on to part C here. Um, you can see again, this is negative, so we know we're going to be adding uh, multiples of 2 pi. And again, if you're not sure how many, just start off with 2 pi. If we have to, we can multiply 2 pi by 2, 3, whatever it takes. And so we get minus 7 pi over 6 plus, and so we need to multiply this 2 pi by a 6 over 6, so that's going to make this 12 pi over 6. All right, and that leaves us with 5 pi over 6. We know that this 5 pi over 6 is between 0 and 2 pi because, for one, it's positive, so we know it's bigger than 0. And we know it's less than 2 pi because 5, 6 is less than 2. Okay. And again, if it's ever a fraction that you're not sure if it's less than 2 or bigger than 2, you can always check the decimal approximation in your calculator. Okay. All right, now let's give uh, part D a try. Okay. And this is a lot bigger than 360, and I think subtracting just a single 360 isn't going to get us between 0 and 360. So I'm going to maybe uh, maybe take away more than just one of those. Let's try 2. And again, if 2 is not enough, we'll try 3. Okay. All right, and so we have 900 minus 360 times 2, and that's going to leave us with 180. This brings us on to our last topic, linear and angular speed. If a point is in motion on a circle of radius r through an angle theta radians in time, then its linear speed is given by v equals and you actually already know this formula for linear speed, s over t. Um, the only difference is you're used to this s being, you know, distance. Okay, s is still distance; it's just distance along the arc. Okay. Um, and let's give an example. Um, an example of linear speed would be the speed of a car, right? When we measure the speed of uh, you know a car going down a road we do it in miles per hour that would be an example of a linear speed okay. and then angular speed this is a little bit different here we're going to be measuring how fast things are rotating we might do this in degrees per second, radians per minute, revolutions per hour. Um, but no matter what, it's going to be measured in some way of measuring angles over some way of measuring time. Okay. And so this formula is going to be theta over t because we're measuring the rate at which an angle is changing or the rate at which something's rotating. An example here would be uh, rate at which a CD is spinning. Okay. And this might be, let's say, in revolutions per second. And again, we could describe this in degrees per second if we wanted to, or revolutions per second. Okay. And now we have just one more formula, alternative formula for linear speed. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of side work here first. So we know that V is equal to S over T. And we also know that S is equal to R times theta. Well, I can rewrite this a little bit differently, too. I could say, how about r over 1 times theta over t? And that theta over t should look familiar. If I look just right up here, theta over t is equal to omega. So all we're left with here is r 
times omega. So this little formula here is V equals R omega. Okay. There is something important to note here. In the derivation of this alternative formula, we use the fact that S is equal to R theta. Okay. Well, that formula is dependent upon us being in radians. So that means if you want to use this last formula here, you need to make sure that your omega is in radians per unit time. Okay. And we're going to write that as a little note down here. Okay, and this, this is just for this specific formula, okay? Omega needs to be in radians per unit time. And I realized I didn't uh, let you all know something that you might want to know. Okay, so in this little formula up here with the omega, I never told you what omega was. This is another Greek letter. It looks a lot like a W. Now that we have all these formulas, let's try and apply them. A CD has a diameter of 120 millimeters. Okay, and before we go any further with this example, I'm going to stop already. Diameter, right, is just double the radius. And the radius is in at least one of these formulas. So let's write it down because maybe we're going to need to use it. We don't know. So if the diameter is 120, then the radius must be. 60 millimeters. Okay. All right, next, when playing audio, the angular speed varies to keep the linear speed constant when the disc is being read. When reading along the outer edge of the disc, the angular speed is about 200 revolutions per minute. Okay, so let's write that down. We have omega, right? This is an angular speed of 200 revolutions per minute. Now, we're being asked to find the linear speed. It says find the linear speed in millimeters per minute. Okay. So we're going to wind up using, then it sounds like, V equals R omega. We have R and omega, we want to find V. Okay. So I could start writing this down. I could say V equals R, so I have my 60. But I've ran into a little bit of a problem. This omega here, if you remember, we don't want it in revolutions per minute, we want this in radians per minute. Okay. Now there's an easy fix here. Well, I want to cancel out revolutions, right? I want to be left with radians per minute. So have my one revolution down here. Well, what's one revolution equivalent to in radians? It's equal to two pi radians. Okay, so now you can see, again, revolutions will cancel, and we're going to be left with 200 times 2 pi, so that's 400 pi. And the units that we're left with are radians per minute. All right, now we can use the formula. Now we can take this 60 and multiply it by the 400 pi radians per minute. Okay, so if we multiply these together, okay, um, it looks like we're going to get 24,000 pi, and this should be in millimeters per
per minute. Okay. I know that it should be in millimeters because that's what we were measuring distance in. Okay. And we were measuring time in minutes, so that's how we got the minutes down there. Okay. Now, this is a perfectly fine answer. And in fact, this is what I'm going to prefer most of the time is what we'll call the exact answer. And actually, I'm going to write that down here real quick. This is the exact answer. Okay. Because we're going to be working with pi in this class so much, it means that most of the time when you plug something in your calculator, it's going to be an irrational number, meaning, right, that there's no pattern to the decimal, the decimals, and they don't end. Okay. So most of the time, we're actually going to prefer to just leave it like this, 24,000 pi. But oftentimes when we have application questions like this, we're also curious about the decimal approximation. Okay. So we might want to plug in this 24,000 pi into our calculator. And if we were to do that, we'd get that V is approximately... And right, I'm using the approximate symbol here, not equals 75,398.22. This is just rounded to the, the nearest hundredth okay, or the second decimal place. I'll fix my eight. Okay. And again, this is still in millimeters per minute. 